Well, I'm actually from the Bahamas. I was born here, grew up here. Um, I've been in the water since I could remember myself. Um, it's just really natural to me. I feel really at home in the water. It's a way to do something that I'm passionate about and to help try and advance that forward. So it's sort of applied conservation research. Yeah, Nassau grouper are particular interest um, here in the Bahamas. They're the most important uh, fin fish fishery species, um, the most valuable to fishermen. And they're also considered to be endangered by the World Conservation Union. The Bahamas and a couple other countries are some of the few places where a viable population still exists. Throughout their range where they used to uh, live throughout the Caribbean, they've been fished out in most places. In addition to myself on this trip, uh, we have a couple representatives from the Bahamas National Trust, a representative from the Bahamas Reef Environmental Education Foundation. We have a teacher with us. We have a, a representative from the Ocean Crest Alliance uh, here in Long Island. And we, uh, we're going to have uh, some fishermen from Long Island out with us on this trip. So really we have a, a diverse crew, everyone with an interest in um, conserving the species and, and really trying to protect it for future generations of Bahamians, um, but all coming at it from different angles, from the conservation world, from the science world, and from the education uh, world as well. We don't have good numbers on uh, how many Nassau grouper there are in the Bahamas. What we do know is that um, each year the Nassau grouper migrate to spawning aggregations to, to spawn. We're seeing a few hundred fish at a spawning site versus 10 to 20 years ago when it was common to see thousands at similar sites in a similar area. The other thing we're finding in our research now is that even though there's been a closed season in place for um, about 10 years now, there's still a high level of, of poaching that goes on. We do see evidence of active fishing at nearly every spawning site that we go to. It's only really about a half hour window that we have to actually catch the fish when they're spawning. Individual fish make spawning rushes and release their eggs in about a second or two. So we really need to be in the right place at the right time following the fish because once they spawn, that's it for, for the year. What we see with Nassau grouper is that they spawn during the full moon in either December, January, or February each year. With individual fish migrating to spawning aggregations up to a couple hundred miles to get from their home range to a spawning site. And it takes five to as many as nine years or so for them to go from that time they're born to the time they're ready to, to start making spawning aggregations. Well, it's really important for us to have involvement from a number of different uh, sectors. Uh, with the fishermen, they're the ones that are, I guess, most in contact with the resource on a, on a you know, regular basis, because that's their livelihood for a lot of people. You know, it's sometimes hard for, for us. It's one of the things that we struggle with is, you know, we're always thinking about things in terms of the science, in terms of applied conservation, but also trying to explain things in a way so that people understand that there are benefits even outside of just the marine environment. So the long-term benefits mean if we are able to protect the fishery now that we can continue to have those fish to you know, harvest in the future. Uh, we just want to promote sustainable fishing practices and not trying to take away the, the fishery resource from the fishermen. That you know, I can continue eating grouper, they can continue eating grouper, their kids and grandkids can know what that tastes like and continue to eat and enjoy grouper. Yesterday was kind of interesting because uh, we had fishing boats out here um, laying traps and uh, you know retrieving traps uh, in the morning and then in the evening. Um, we had the opportunity to invite one of the fishermen on board and talk to them. There are some misconceptions, so he was of the opinion that uh, only the grouper, the grouper that go in traps would have been the grouper that have either already released their eggs or um, males, because uh, he doesn't believe that gravid females or females that are carrying eggs are going to want to eat so they wouldn't go into the traps. That's contrary to what we've seen uh, when we've released grouper out of traps. There have been males, there have been females, like obviously, you know, gravid carrying eggs in their stomachs. The challenge is if this sort of thing continues and if they continue to put this kind of pressure on the aggregations during this season, uh, 
the likelihood is that we're going to continue to see a decline in the aggregations of grouper, and um, that's not something that we want because these are the, the broodstock, they're the ones that are going to replenish the populations. I've never seen a fish, a fin fish other than a shark, as big as me, ever. I've never seen one while I've been diving, and I can't imagine what the ocean would have been like 20 years ago, 40 years ago, to have been able to see that. All my kids are divers. I want them to be able to see the ocean for what it is, as beautiful as it is now, and I don't think my kids will see that in their lifetime. I'm just not sure how the Nassau's will survive here if an immediate ban and enforcement isn't uh, put in place. We've heard stories of poachers from other countries coming in, but you have poachers right here in your own country stealing really from your own people. It hits home, and it's near and dear to my heart. It would just be really sad to see them disappear totally. The numbers of poachers have decreased over the times so we've been here. So the first year, there would be dozens of traps. Second year, just a few, maybe a dozen or two, and now only a few traps that we've seen. So the message is getting out there to not fish the school, and those who follow the rules are basically helping us out. But in terms, there's still need for enforcement and still need for greater education and awareness. And we have to find a way to reach those persons. Over the last couple days, I feel good that we got a lot accomplished. You know, we did get to see all the different spawning sites that we had, we had hoped to see and assess their status. Uh, I would have liked to have seen more fish um, and more spawning activity. We were also able to successfully see how effective the closed season is. I would have liked to have seen less fishing though. Um, so all in all, I think we, I'm happy that we achieved the goals of the expedition. I could be more happy about the results though, what we saw. I'm hopeful, you kind of have to be optimistic in this field and just believe that what you're doing is gonna make a difference. It's kind of what keeps you going because we're we want to be able to enjoy the environment the way um, that we are now in the future. We have a, a legacy, I feel, to protect. We've made some good strides in terms of conservation in the country uh, with the establishment of marine protected areas and national parks. And that's a good first step, but we really need to amp up the enforcement and the education. It's, it's a big challenge, but um, we can do it just one day at a time.